The term eunuch Greek, eunochos generally refers to a man who has been castrated, typically early enough in his life for this change to have major hormonal consequences. In Latin, the words eunuchus, spado Greek, spaden, spaden, and castratus were used to denote eunuchs. Castration was typically carried out on the soon-to-be eunuch without his consent in order that he might perform a specific social function. The earliest records for intentional castration to produce eunuchs are from the Sumerian city of Lagash in the 21st century BC. Over the millennia since, they have performed a wide variety of functions in many different cultures, courtiers or equivalent domestics, treble singers, religious specialists, soldiers, royal guards, government officials, and guardians of women or harem servants. Eunuchs would usually be servants or slaves who had been castrated in order to make them reliable servants of a royal court where physical access to the ruler could wield great influence. Seemingly lowly domestic functions such as making the ruler's bed, bathing him, cutting his hair, carrying him in his litter, or even relaying messages could in theory give a eunuch the ruler's ear and impart de facto power on the formerly humble but trusted servant. Similar instances are reflected in the humble origins and etymology of many high offices. Eunuchs supposedly did not generally have loyalties to the military, the aristocracy, or to a family of their own having neither offspring nor in-laws, at the very least, and were thus seen as more trustworthy and less interested in establishing a private dynasty. Because their condition usually lowered their social status, they could also be easily replaced or killed without repercussion. In cultures that had both harems and eunuchs, eunuchs were sometimes used as harem servants compare the female odalisque or seraglio guards. Etymology Eunuch comes from the Greek word eunuchus, first attested in a fragment of Hipponax, the 6th century BC comic poet and prolific inventor of compound words. The acerbic poet describes a certain lover of fine food having consumed his estate dining lavishly and at leisure every day on tuna and garlic honey cheese pâté like a lampsacene eunuchus. In ancient classical literature from the early 5th century BC onward, the word generally designates some incapacity for or abstention from procreation, whether due to natural constitution or to physical mutilation. For instance, Lucian suggests two methods to determine whether someone is a eunuch, physical inspection of the body, or scrutiny of his ability to perform sexually with females Lucian, Eunuchus 12. The earliest surviving etymology of the word is from late antiquity. The 5th century AD etymologicon by Orion of Thebes offers two alternative origins for the word eunuch, first, to ten eunin ekane, guarding the bed, a derivation inferred from eunuch's established role at the time as bedchamber attendants in the imperial palace, and second, to eutou no ekane, being good with respect to the mind, which Orion explains based on their being deprived of male-female intercourse the things that the ancients used to call irrational anoida, literally, mindless. Orion's second option reflects well-established idioms in Greek, as shown by entries for nous, eunos and ekane in Liddell and Scott's Greek-English lexicon, while the first option is not listed as an idiom under eun in that standard reference work. However, the first option was cited by the late 9th century Byzantine emperor Leo VI in his new constitution 98 banning the marriage of eunuchs, in which he noted eunuchs' reputation as trustworthy guardians of the marriage bed and claimed that the very word eunuch attested to this kind of employment. The emperor also goes further than Orion by attributing eunuchs' lack of male-female intercourse specifically to castration, which he said was performed with the intention that they will no longer do the things that males do, or at least to extinguish whatever has to do with desire for the female sex." The 11th-century Byzantine monk Nikon of the Black Mountain, opting instead for Orion's second alternative, stated that the word came from unoin eu, good, plus nous, mind, thus meaning, to be well-minded, well-inclined, well-disposed or favorable. But unlike Orion he argued that this was due to the trust that certain jealous and suspicious foreign rulers placed in the loyalty of their eunuchized servants. Theophylact of Orid in a dialogue in defense of eunuchs also stated that the origin of the word was from eunoin and ekane, to have, hold, since they were always, well disposed, toward the master who, held, or owned them. 
The 12th century Etymologicum Magnum S. V. Unucus essentially repeats the entry from Orion, but stands by the first option, while attributing the second option to what some say. In the late 12th century, Eustathius of Thessalonica commentaries on Homer 1256.30, 1643.16 offered an original derivation of the word from Unis plus Okuin, deprived of mating. In translations of the Bible into modern European languages, such as the Luther Bible or the King James Bible, the word eunuchus as found in the Latin Vulgate is usually rendered as officer, official or chamberlain, consistent with the idea that the original meaning of eunuch was bedkeeper Orion's first option. Modern religious scholars have been disinclined to assume that the courts of Israel and Judah included castrated men, even though the original translation of the Bible into Greek used the word eunuchus. The early 17th century scholar and theologian Gerardus Vossius therefore explains that the word originally designated an office, and he affirms the view that it was derived from eun and ekane, i.e., bed keeper. He says the word came to be applied to castrated men in general because such men were the usual holders of that office. Still, Vossius notes the alternative etymologies offered by Eustathius, deprived of mating, and others, having the mind in a good state calling these analyses, "...quite subtle." Then, after having previously declared that eunuch designated an office i.e. not a personal characteristic, Vossius ultimately sums up his argument in a different way, saying that the word, "...originally signified continent men," to whom the care of women was entrusted, and later came to refer to castration because, "...among foreigners," that role was performed, "...by those with mutilated bodies." Modern etymologists have followed Orion's first option. In an influential 1925 essay on the word eunuch and related terms, Ernst Moss suggested that Eustathus's derivation, can or must be laid to rest, and he affirmed the derivation from eun and ekane, guardian of the bed, without mentioning the other derivation from eunos and ekane, having a well-disposed state of mind. Topic. By region and epoch. Topic. Ancient Middle East Eunuchs were familiar figures in the Assyrian Empire ca. 850 until 622 BC and in the court of the Egyptian pharaohs down to the Lagid dynasty known as Ptolemies, ending with Cleopatra, 30 BC. Eunuchs sometimes were used as regents for underage heirs to the throne, as it seems to be the case for the Neo-Hittite state of Carchemish. Political eunuchism became a fully established institution among the Achaemenide Persians. Eunuchs held powerful positions in the Achaemenide court. The eunuch Begoas, not to be confused with Alexander's Begoas, was the vizier of Artaxerxes III and IV, and was the primary power behind the throne during their reigns until he was killed by Darius III. Topic: <laughs> Ancient Greece, Rome, and Byzantium. The practice was also well established in other Mediterranean areas among the Greeks and Romans, although a role as court functionary does not arise until Byzantine times. The galley or priests of Cybele were eunuchs. In the late period of the Roman Empire, after the adoption of the Oriental royal court model by the emperors Diocletian and Constantine, emperors were surrounded by eunuchs for such functions as bathing, hair cutting, dressing, and bureaucratic functions, in effect acting as a shield between the emperor and his administrators from physical contact, thus enjoying great influence in the imperial court see Eusebius and Eutropius. Eunuchs were believed loyal and indispensable. The Roman poet Martial rails against a woman who has sex with partially castrated eunuchs, those whose testicles were removed or rendered inactive only, in the bitter epigram v. 67. Do you ask, Panicus, why your Sila only consorts with eunuchs? Sila wants the flowers of marriage, not the fruits. It is up for debate whether this passage is representative of any sort of widely practiced behavior, however. At the Byzantine imperial court, there were a great number of eunuchs employed in domestic and administrative functions, actually organized as a separate hierarchy, following a parallel career of their own. Archie eunuchs, each in charge of a group of eunuchs, were among the principal officers in Constantinople, under the emperors. Under Justinian in the 6th century, the eunuch Narses functioned as a successful general in a number of campaigns. By the last centuries of the empire the number of roles reserved for eunuchs had reduced, and their use may have been all but over. 
Following the Byzantine tradition, eunuchs had important tasks at the court of the Norman Kingdom of Sicily during the middle 12th century. One of them, Philip of Madia, has been admiratus admiratorum, and another one, Ahmed S. Cycli, was prime minister. Topic: <laughs> China. In China, castration included removal of the penis as well as the testicles, see emasculation. Both organs were cut off with a knife at the same time. From ancient times until the Sui dynasty, castration was both a traditional punishment one of the five punishments and a means of gaining employment in the imperial service. Certain eunuchs gained immense power that occasionally superseded that of even the grand secretaries. Zheng He, who lived during the Ming dynasty, is an example of such a eunuch. Self-castration was a common practice, although it was not always performed completely, which led to its being made illegal. It is said that the justification for the employment of eunuchs as high-ranking civil servants was that, since they were incapable of having children, they would not be tempted to seize power and start a dynasty. In many cases, eunuchs were considered more reliable than the scholar officials. A similar system existed in Vietnam. The tension between eunuchs in the service of the emperor and virtuous Confucian officials is a familiar theme in Chinese history. In his History of Government, Samuel Finer points out that reality was not always that clear-cut. There were instances of very capable eunuchs who were valuable advisors to their emperor, and the resistance of the virtuous officials often stemmed from jealousy on their part. Ray Huang argues that in reality, eunuchs represented the personal will of the emperor, while the officials represented the alternative political will of the bureaucracy. The clash between them would thus have been a clash of ideologies or political agenda. The number of eunuchs in imperial employ fell to 470 by 1912, when the practice of using them ceased. The last imperial eunuch, Sun Yaoting, died in December 1996. Topic: <laughs> Qin Dynasty. Men sentenced to castration were turned into eunuch slaves of the Qin dynasty state to perform forced labor for projects such as the Terracotta Army. The Qin government confiscated the property and enslaved the families of rapists who received castration as a punishment. Men punished with castration during the Han dynasty were also used as slave labor. <laughs> Han dynasty In Han Dynasty China castration continued to be used as a punishment for various offenses. Sima Qian, the famous Chinese historian, was castrated by order of the Han Emperor of China for dissent. In another incident multiple people, including a chief scribe and his underlings, were subjected to castration. <laughs> Tang Dynasty Indigenous tribals from southern China were used as eunuchs during the Sui and Tang dynasties. Topic: <inaudible> Liao Dynasty. The Khitans adopted the practice of using eunuchs from the Chinese and the eunuchs were non-Khitan prisoners of war. When they founded the Liao Dynasty, they developed a harem system with concubines and wives and adopted eunuchs as part of it. The Khitans captured Chinese eunuchs at the Jin court when they invaded the later Jin. Another source was during their war with the Song dynasty, the Khitan would raid China, capture Han Chinese boys as prisoners of war and emasculate them to become eunuchs. The emasculation of captured Chinese boys guaranteed a continuous supply of eunuchs to serve in the Liao dynasty harem. The Empress Dowager Chengtian played a large role in the raids to capture and emasculate the boys. She personally led her own army defeated the Song in 986, fighting the retreating Chinese army. She then ordered the castration of around 100 Chinese boys she had captured, supplementing the Khitan's supply of eunuchs to serve at her court, among them was Wang Jian. The boys were all under 10 years old and were selected for their good looks. <laughs> Yuan Dynasty Eunuchs, concubines, falcons, ginseng, grain, cloth, silver, and gold were sent as tribute by the Goryeo dynasty of Korea to the Mongol Yuan dynasty. Among those who went to Yuan were Empress Gi and the eunuch Bak Bulwa who caused harm to Goryeo. The tribute payment was a burden on Korea. King Chongsun (1309–1313) married two Mongol women, Princess Badasaran and a non-royal woman named Yesujin. She gave birth to a son and had a posthumously title of. Virtuous concubine. 
In addition 1324, the Yuan court sent a Mongol princess of Wei named Jintong to the Koryo king Cheungshug. Thus, the entry of Korean women into the Mongol court was reciprocated by the entry of Mongolian princesses into the Korean Koryo court, and this affected relations between Korea and the Yuan. Imperial marriages between the royal family of Mongol Yuan existed between certain states. These included the Ongarat tribe, Idug Kyuts Uyghur tribe, the Orat tribe, and the Koryo Korean royal family. This intermarriage between royal families did not occur between the deposed Chinese and Mongols. <laughs> Ming dynasty There were eunuchs from China's various ethnic tribes, Mongolia, Korea, Vietnam, Cambodia, Central Asia, Thailand, and Okinawa. During the early Ming period, Korean concubines and eunuchs, some of whom oversaw the Korean concubines in the harem, were occasionally demanded as tribute by Ming emperors, such as the Xuand Emperor, for the imperial harem in imitation of the previous dynasty's precedent, as were Vietnamese women and eunuchs. Korea stopped sending human tribute after 1435. A total of 98 virgins and 198 eunuchs were sent from Korea to Ming. There were Korean, Yurchin, Mongol, Central Asian, and Vietnamese eunuchs under the Yongle Emperor, including Mongol eunuchs who served him while he was the Prince of Yan. Muslim and Mongol eunuchs were present in the Ming court, such as the ones captured from Mongol controlled Yunnan in 1381, and among them was the great Ming maritime explorer Zheng He, who served Yongle. Muslim eunuchs were sent as ambassadors to the Timurids. Vietnamese eunuchs like Ruan Lang, Ruan An, Fan Hong, Chen Wu, and Wang Jin were sent by Zhang Fu to the Ming. During Ming's early contentious relations with Joseon, when there were disputes such as competition for influence over the Yurchins in Manchuria, Korean officials were even flogged by Korean-born Ming eunuch ambassadors when their demands were not met. Some of the ambassadors were arrogant, such as Sin Kwi Sang who, in 1398, got drunk and brandished a knife at a dinner in the presence of the king. Sino-Korean relations later became amiable, and Korean envoy's seating arrangement in the Ming court was always the highest among the tributaries. During the Miao rebellions, the Ming governor castrated thousands of Miao boys when their tribes revolted, and then gave them as slaves to various officials. The governor who ordered the castration of the Miao was reprimanded and condemned by the Ming Tianchen Emperor for doing it once the Ming government heard of the event. Zhu Shuang, Prince of Qin, while he was high on drugs, had some Tibetan boys castrated and Tibetan women seized after a war against minority Tibetan peoples and as a result was reprimanded after he died from overdose. On 30 January 1406, the Yongle Emperor expressed horror when the Ryukyuans castrated some of their own children to become eunuchs in order to give them to the emperor. The Yongle Emperor said that the boys who were castrated were innocent and did not deserve castration, and he returned the boys to Ryukyu and instructed them not to send eunuchs again. An anti pig slaughter edict led to speculation that the Jungdu Emperor adopted Islam due to his use of Muslim eunuchs who commissioned the production of porcelain with Persian and Arabic inscriptions in white and blue color. Muslim eunuchs contributed money in 1496 to repairing Niuji Mosque. Central Asian women were provided to the Jungdu Emperor by a Muslim guard and Sayyid Hussein from Hami. The guard was Yu Young and the women were Uyghur. It is unknown who really was behind the anti-pig slaughter edict. The speculation of him becoming a Muslim is remembered alongside his excessive and debauched behavior along with his concubines of foreign origin. Muslim Central Asian girls were favored by Jungdu like how Korean girls were favored by Shuand. A Uyghur concubine was kept by Jungdu. Foreign origin Uyghur and Mongol women were favored by the Jungdu Emperor. At the end of the Ming dynasty, there were about 70,000 eunuchs Huan Guan Wang Guan, or Taijian Taijian employed by the emperor, with some serving inside the imperial palace. There were 100,000 eunuchs at the height of their numbers during the Ming. In popular culture texts such as Zhang Yingyu's The Book of Swindles ca. 1617, eunuchs were often portrayed in starkly negative terms as enriching themselves through excessive taxation and indulging in cannibalism and debauched sexual practices. <laughs> Qing dynasty While eunuchs were employed in all Chinese dynasties, their number decreased significantly under the Qing, and the tasks they performed were largely replaced by the imperial household department. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were about 2,000 eunuchs working in the Forbidden City. The eunuchs at the Forbidden City during the later Qing period were infamous for their corruption, stealing as much as they could. 
The position of eunuch at the Forbidden City offered such opportunities for theft and corruption and China was such a poor country that countless men willingly become eunuchs in order to live a better life. However, eunuchs as the emperor's slaves had no rights and could be abused at the emperor's whim. The emperor Puyi recalled in his memoirs that growing up in the Forbidden City that, by the age of eleven, flogging eunuchs was part of my daily routine. My cruelty and love of power were already too firmly set for persuasion to have any effect on me. Whenever I was in a bad temper the eunuchs would be in for trouble." All of the eunuchs that lived in the Forbidden City had to carry their severed genitals in a glass jar full of vinegar around their necks at all times. After the revolution of 1911-12 that toppled the Qing, the last emperor, Puyi, continued to live in the Forbidden City with his eunuchs as if the revolution had never happened while receiving financial support from the new Chinese Republic until 1924 when the former emperor and his entourage were expelled from the Forbidden City by the warlord General Feng Yuxiang. In 1923, after a case of arson that Puyi believed was started to cover the theft of his imperial treasures, Puyi expelled all of the eunuchs from the Forbidden City. The sons and grandsons of the Tajik rebel, Yaqub Beg, in China were all castrated. Surviving members of Yaqub Beg's family included his four sons, four grandchildren, two grandsons and two granddaughters, and four wives. They either died in prison in Lanzhou, Gansu, or were killed by the Chinese. His sons Yima Kuli, Kati Kuli, Mathi Kuli, and grandson Aisan Ahing were the only survivors in 1879. They were all underage children, and put on trial, sentenced to an agonizing death if they were complicit in their father's rebellious sedition, or if they were innocent of their father's crimes, were to be sentenced to castration and serve as eunuch slaves to Chinese troops, when they reached 11 years old, and were handed over to the imperial household to be executed or castrated. In 1879, it was confirmed that the sentence of castration was carried out. Jakob Beg's son and grandsons were castrated by the Chinese court in 1879 and turned into eunuchs to work in the imperial palace. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Korea. The eunuchs of Korea, called Naesi, Nizi Naeshi, were officials to the king and other royalty in traditional Korean society. The first recorded appearance of a Korean eunuch was in Goryosa, History of Goryeo, a compilation about the Goryeo period. In 1392, with the founding of the Joseon dynasty, the Naesi system was revised, and the department was renamed the Department of Naesi. Nizibu ne shi fu the Naesi system included two ranks, those of Sangsian, Sangsian Shang, Chief of Naesi. Who held the official title of senior second rank, and Naguan, Naguan Naguan, common official Naesi, both of which held rank as officers. 140 Naesi in total served the palace in Joseon dynasty period. They also took the exam on Confucianism every month. The Naesi system was repealed in 1894 following Gabo reform. During the Yuan dynasty, eunuchs became a desirable commodity for tributes, and dog bites were replaced by more sophisticated surgical techniques. Eunuchs were the only males outside the royal family allowed to stay inside the palace overnight. Court records going back to 1392 indicate that the average lifespan of eunuchs was 70.0 plus or minus 1.76 years, which was 14.4 to 19.1 years longer than the lifespan of non castrated men of similar socio economic status. Topic. Vietnam The Vietnamese adopted the eunuch system and castration techniques from China. Records show that the Vietnamese performed castration in a painful procedure by removing the entire genitalia with both penis and testicles being cut off with a sharp knife or metal blade. The procedure was agonizing since the entire penis was cut off. The young man's thighs and abdomen would be tied and others would pin him down on a table. The genitals would be washed with pepper water and then cut off. A tube would be then inserted into the urethra to allow urination during healing. The eunuchs served as slaves to the Vietnamese palace women in the harem like the consorts, concubines, maids, queen, and princesses doing most of the work. The only man allowed in the palace was the emperor, the only others allowed were his women and the eunuchs since they were not able to have sexual relations with the women. The eunuchs were assigned to do work for the palace women, like massaging and applying makeup to the women, preparing them for sex with the emperor. Topic: <inaudible> Li Dynasty. 
Li Thuong Keat was a prominent eunuch general during the Li dynasty Tran dynasty A boy student was given money in exchange for becoming a eunuch by Tran Gun in 1254 since many men castrated themselves to become eunuchs during the Tran and Li dynasties. The Tran dynasty sent Vietnamese boy eunuchs as tribute to Ming dynasty China several times. In 1383, 1384, and 1385, Nguyen Dao, Nguyen Tone, True Ca, and Go Tin were among several Vietnamese eunuchs sent to China. Topic. Fourth Chinese domination of Vietnam Ming Dynasty. During the Fourth Chinese domination of Vietnam, the Ming Chinese under the Yongle Emperor castrated many young Vietnamese boys, choosing them for their handsomeness and ability, and brought them to Nanjing to serve as eunuchs. Among them were the architect engineer Nguyen An and Nguyen Lang. Ruan Lang. Vietnamese were among the many eunuchs of different origins found at the Yongle Emperor's court. Among the eunuchs in charge of the capital battalions of Beijing was Xing An, a Vietnamese. <inaudible> La dynasty In the La dynasty the Vietnamese emperor Le Tan Tong was aggressive in his relations with foreign countries including China. A large amount of trade between Guangdong and Vietnam happened during his reign. Early accounts recorded that the Vietnamese captured Chinese whose ships had blown off course and detained them. Young Chinese men were selected by the Vietnamese for castration to become eunuch slaves to the Vietnamese. It has been speculated by modern historians that the Chinese who were captured and castrated by the Vietnamese were involved in trade between China and Vietnam instead of actually being blown off course by the wind and they were punished as part of a crackdown on foreign trade by Vietnam. Several Malay envoys from the Malacca Sultanate were attacked and captured in 1469 by the La Dynasty of Annam Vietnam as they were returning to Malacca from China. The Vietnamese enslaved and castrated the young from among the captured. A 1472 entry in the Ming Shilu reported that some Chinese from Nane County escaped back to China after their ship had been blown off course into Vietnam, where they had been forced to serve as soldiers in Vietnam's military. The escapees also reported that they found out that up to 100 Chinese men remained captive in Vietnam after they were caught and castrated by the Vietnamese after their ships were blown off course into Vietnam. The Chinese Ministry of Revenue responded by ordering Chinese civilians and soldiers to stop going abroad to foreign countries. China's relations with Vietnam during this period were marked by the punishment of prisoners by castration. A 1499 entry in the Ming Shilu recorded that 13 Chinese men from Wenchang, including a man named Wu Rui, Wu Rui were captured by the Vietnamese after their ship was blown off course while traveling from Hainan to Guangdong's Qin subprefecture, Qinzhou, causing them to end up near the coast of Vietnam during the Chenghua Emperor's rule, 1447 to 1487. Twelve of them were enslaved as agricultural laborers while Wu Rui, the only one still young, was castrated and became a eunuch attendant at the Vietnamese Imperial Palace in Thang Long. After years of service, upon the death of the Vietnamese ruler in 1497, he was promoted to a military position in northern Vietnam. There, a soldier told him of an escape route back to China through which Wu Rui then escaped to Longzhou. The local chief planned to sell him back to the Vietnamese, but Wu was rescued by the Pingxiang magistrate, then was sent to Beijing to work as a eunuch in the palace. The Dai Viet Su Kentucky Tone Two records that in 1467 in Anbang province of Dai Viet, now Quang Ninh province, a Chinese ship blew off course onto the shore. The Chinese were detained and not allowed to return to China as ordered by Le Tan Tong. This incident may be the same one where Wu Rui was captured. Topic. Nguyen dynasty The poet Ho Zan Hong mocked eunuchs in her poem as a stand in for criticizing the government. Commoners were banned from undergoing castration in Vietnam. Only adult men of high social rank could be castrated. Most eunuchs were born as such with a congenital abnormality. The Vietnamese government mandated that boys born with defective genitalia were to be reported to officials, in exchange for the town being freed from mandatory labor requirements. The boy would have the option of serving as a eunuch official or serving the palace women when he became 10 years old. This law was put in place in 1838 during the Nguyen dynasty. 
The only males allowed inside the Forbidden City at Hue were the Emperor and his eunuchs. The presence of eunuchs in Vietnam was used by the French colonizers to degrade the Vietnamese. Topic: <laughs> Thailand. In Siam, modern Thailand, Indian Muslims from the Karamandal coast served as eunuchs in the Thai palace and court. The Thai at times asked eunuchs from China to visit the court in Thailand and advise them on court ritual since they held them in high regard. Topic: <inaudible> Burma. Sir Henry Yule saw many Muslims serving as eunuchs in Konbang Dynasty Burma, modern Myanmar, while on a diplomatic mission. These Muslim eunuchs came from Arakan. Topic: <inaudible> Ottoman Empire. In the Ottoman Empire, eunuchs were typically slaves imported from outside their domains. A fair proportion of male slaves were imported as eunuchs. The Ottoman court harem, within the Topkapi Palace, 1465 to 1853, and later the Dolmabache Palace, 1853 to 1909, in Istanbul, was under the administration of the eunuchs. These were of two categories: black eunuchs and white eunuchs. Black eunuchs were African slaves who served the concubines and officials in the harem together with chamber maidens of low rank. The white eunuchs were Europeans from the Balkans or the Caucasus, either purchased in the slave markets or were boys taken from Christian families in the Balkans who were unable to pay the jizya tax. They served the recruits at the palace school and were from 1582 prohibited from entering the harem. An important figure in the Ottoman court was the chief black eunuch Kizlar Agassi or Dar al Sada Agassi. In control of both the harem and a net of spies in the black eunuchs, the chief eunuch was involved in almost every palace intrigue and could thereby gain power over either the sultan or one of his viziers, ministers, or other court officials. One of the most powerful chief eunuchs was Bashir Aga in the 1730s, who played a crucial role in establishing the Ottoman version of Hanafi Islam throughout the empire by founding libraries and schools. The entire Devsirme system, where the children of Christian families in the Balkans unable to pay the onerous jizya tax were taken away, and, depending upon their sex, became either concubines, in the case of the girls, or, in the case of the boys, were conscripted into Janissary Corps or became eunuchs. The act emasculation made Ottoman rule much hated by Christians in the Balkans. Topic. Coptic involvement Edmund Andrews of Northwestern University, in an 1898 article called, Oriental Eunuchs, in the American Journal of Medicine, refers to Coptic priests in Abu Gurhi in Upper Egypt. Castrating slave boys, Coptic castration of slaves was discussed by Peter Charles Remondino, in his book History of Circumcision from the Earliest Times to the Present, published in 1900. He refers to the Abu Gurg monastery in a place he calls Mount Gebel Eter. He adds details not mentioned by Andrews, such as the insertion of bamboo into the victim. Bamboo was used with Chinese eunuchs. Andrews states his information is derived from an earlier work, Les Femmes, Les Eunuchs, et Les Guerriers du Soden, published by a French explorer, Count de Bisson, in 1868. Though the place does not appear in de Bisson's book, Remondino's claims were repeated in similar form by Henry G. Spooner in 1919, in the American Journal of Urology and Sexology. Spooner, an associate of William J. Robinson, referred to the monastery as Abu Jerb in Upper Egypt. According to Remondino, Spooner and several later sources, the Coptic priest sliced the penis and testicles off Nubian or Abyssinian slave boys around the age of eight. The boys were captured from Abyssinia and other areas in Sudan like Darfur and Kordofan, then brought into Sudan and Egypt. During the operation, the Coptic clergyman chained the boys to tables, then, after slicing off their sexual organs, stuck a piece of bamboo into the genital area, and then submerged them in neck-high sand to burn. The recovery rate was 10%. The resulting eunuchs fetched large profits in contrast to eunuchs from other areas. An identifiable Coptic area named in relation to castration of slaves is the former village of Al Zaya. Slave traders traveling north from the Sudan would castrate their slave boys here, before entering the Muslim city of Asyut, 10 miles north, where they could be sold. Algiers 
In the 16th century, an Englishman, Samson Rowley, was captured and castrated to serve the Ottoman governor in Algiers. Indian subcontinent Eunuchs and Indian sultanates before Mughals Eunuchs were frequently employed in imperial palaces by Muslim rulers as servants for female royalty, as guards of the royal harem, and as sexual mates for the nobles. Some of these attained high status positions in society. An early example of such a high ranking eunuch was Malik Kafir. Eunuchs in imperial palaces were organized in a hierarchy, often with a senior or chief eunuch Urdu, Khwaja Saras, directing junior eunuchs below him. Eunuchs were highly valued for their strength and trustworthiness, allowing them to live amongst women with fewer worries. This enabled eunuchs to serve as messengers, watchmen, attendants and guards for palaces. Often, eunuchs also doubled as part of the king's court of advisors. The Hijra of South Asia The ancient Indian Kama Sutra refers to people of a third sex. Tritiya Prakirti, who can be dressed either in men's or in women's clothes and perform fellatio on men. The term has been translated as eunuchs, as in Sir Richard Burton's translation of the book, but these persons have also been considered to be the equivalent of the modern hijra of India. Hijra, an Urdu term traditionally translated into English as eunuch, actually refers to what modern Westerners would call transgender women and effeminate homosexual men although some of them reportedly identify as belonging to a third sex. Some of them undergo ritual castration, but the majority do not. They usually dress in saris traditional Indian garb worn by women or shalwar kameez traditional garb worn by women in South Asia and wear heavy makeup. They typically live in the margins of society and face discrimination. However, they are integral to several Hindu ceremonies which is the primary form of their livelihood. They are a part of dance programs sometimes adult in marriage ceremonies. They also perform certain ceremonies for the couple in Hindu tradition. Other means to earn their living are, by coming, uninvited at weddings, births, new shop openings and other major family events, singing until they are paid or given gifts to go away. The ceremony is supposed to bring good luck and fertility, while the curse of an unappeased hijra is feared by many. Other sources of income for the hijra are begging and prostitution. The begging is accompanied by singing and dancing and the hiras usually get the money easily. Some Indian provincial officials have used the assistance of hiras to collect taxes in the same fashion. They knock on the doors of shopkeepers, while dancing and singing, embarrassing them into paying. Recently, Hiras have started to found organizations to improve their social condition and fight discrimination, such as the Shemail Foundation Pakistan. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious castration. Castration is part of religious practice, and eunuchs occupying religious roles have been established prior to classical antiquity. Archaeological finds at Katalhoyuk in Anatolia indicate worship of a magna mater figure, a forerunner of the goddess Cybele found in later Anatolia and other parts of the Near East. Later Roman followers of Cybele were called Galli, who practiced ritual self-castration, known as sanguinaria. Eunuch priests also figured prominently in the Atargatis cult in Syria during the 1st centuries CE. The practice of religious castration continued into the Christian era, with members of the early church practicing celibacy including castration for religious purposes, although the extent and even the existence of this practice among Christians is subject to debate. The early theologian Origen found evidence of the practice in Matthew chapter 19 verses 10 to 12. His disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. Quote, but he said to them, Not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. NRSV. Tertullian, a 2nd century church father, described Jesus himself and Paul of Tarsus as spadonis, which is translated as eunuchs in some contexts. Quoting from the cited book, Tertullian takes spado to mean virgin. The meaning of spado in late antiquity can be interpreted as a metaphor for celibacy. 
Tertullian even goes so far with the metaphor as to say Saint Paul had been castrated. Eunuch priests have served various goddesses from India for many centuries. Similar phenomena are exemplified by some modern Indian communities of the Hijra, which are associated with a deity and with certain rituals and festivals, notably the devotees of Yelamadevi, or Jogapas, who are not castrated and the Ali of southern India, of whom at least some are. The 18th century Russian Skopsi, Skopsi sect was an example of a castration cult, where its members regarded castration as a way of renouncing the sins of the flesh. Several members of the 20th century Heaven's Gate cult were found to have been castrated, apparently voluntarily and for the same reasons. In the Bible Eunuchs are mentioned many times in the Bible such as in the Book of Isaiah 56 using the word shrees Although the ancient Hebrews did not practice castration, eunuchs were common in other cultures featured in the Bible, such as ancient Egypt, Babylonia, the Persian Empire and ancient Rome. In the Book of Esther, servants of the harem of Ahasuerus such as Hegai and Shashgaz as well as other servants such as Hatash, Harbona, Bigthan, and Teresh are referred to as Sarism. Being exposed to the consorts of the king, they would have likely been castrated. There is some confusion regarding eunuchs in Old Testament passages, since the Hebrew word for eunuch, saris, shrees could also refer to other servants and officials who had not been castrated but served in similar capacities. The Egyptian royal servant Potiphar is described as a saris in Genesis chapter 39 verse 1, although he was married and hence unlikely to have been a castrated eunuch. One of the earliest converts to Christianity was an Ethiopian eunuch who was a high court official of Candace the Queen of Ethiopia. Acts chapter 8 verses 27 to 39 the reference to eunuchs in Matthew chapter 19 verse 12 has yielded various interpretations topic non castrated eunuchs Hippocrates describes a particular ethnic group afflicted with high rates of erectile dysfunction as the most eunuchoid of all nations Airs waters places 22 the term eunuch has sometimes figuratively been used for a wide range of men who were seen to be physically unable to procreate in the charlton t lewis charles short a latin dictionary the term used is spado which is literally used for impotent males but may also be used for eunuchs but this is sometimes generalized to mean that eunuch may be used for impotent males which is a fallacy topic castrato singers Eunuchs castrated before puberty were also valued and trained in several cultures for their exceptional voices, which retained a childlike and otherworldly flexibility and treble pitch a high-pitched voice. Such eunuchs were known as castrati. Unfortunately the choice had to be made at an age when the boy would not yet be able to consciously choose whether to sacrifice his reproductive capabilities, and there was no guarantee that the voice would remain of musical excellence after the operation. As women were sometimes forbidden to sing in church, their place was taken by castrati. The practice, known as castratism, remained popular until the 18th century and was known into the 19th century. The last famous Italian castrato, Giovanni Velluti, died in 1861. The sole existing sound recording of a castrato singer documents the voice of Alessandro Moreschi, the last eunuch in the Sistine Chapel Choir, who died in 1922. In the contemporary world The Hijra of India see above may number as many as two million, and are usually described as eunuchs, although they may be more of a male to female transsexual individual, but have surgical castration instead of reassignment surgery, and seldom have access to hormones. The loss of testosterone and lack of estrogen means their bodies take on the characteristics of postpubertal eunuchs. The most commonly castrated men are advanced prostate cancer patients. In the United States alone there are more than 200,000 new cases of prostate cancer diagnosed each year. It is estimated that over 80,000 of these men will be surgically or chemically castrated within six months of diagnosis. With the average life expectancy after castration, there are approximately a half million chemically or surgically castrated prostate cancer patients at any time in the U.S. alone. While most of these men would deny the term eunuch, they meet all physiological characteristics of postpubertal eunuchs. 
Some do, however, embrace the term for the historic and psychological grounding that it gives them. Convicted sex offenders who have been castrated are rare, although there is debate as to whether the drastic reduction of testosterone and the consequent diminishing of libido might have an effect on recidivism. A study on eunuchs has found that they live 13.5 years longer than non eunuch men as a result of a lack of testosterone, which reduces the likelihood of participation in risky behaviors, such as violence. In popular culture Films The 2001 documentary film Bombay Eunuch examines the changing role of India's hiras, some of whom are also eunuchs. The 2011 film Nilkantho treats the plight of the Indian hiras with sensitivity. The 2003 documentary film American Unix investigates the underworld of modern Unix in America. Kiss the Moon, a 2010 documentary set in Pakistan, portrays three generations of Unix examining the ancient rituals and religious beliefs surrounding their community. The Last Eunuch, a 1988 Chinese biographical film directed by Zhang Jiliang, tells the story of Sun Yaoting, who saw the last royal palace's extravagant lifestyle and experienced the breakdown of the last imperial empire and felt the new changes brought by the new age. In Mel Brooks's 1981 comedy History of the World, Part 1, under the section of The Roman Empire, an entire scene is devoted to a joke about eunuchs, the length of African genitals, and the song. Caldonia, all rolled into one. Topic: <inaudible> Books. Several tales of the Arabian Nights focus on eunuchs. Eunuchs feature prominently in Montesquieu's 1722 novel Lettre Persanes about Persian visitors to 18th-century France. Pagoas, the eunuch favorite of Alexander the Great, is the main character and narrator of The Persian Boy, a 1972 historical novel by Mary Renault. The Janissary Tree and its sequels are crime novels set in Istanbul in the 1830s, written by Jason Goodwin featuring Yashim, a eunuch detective. Castrati singers in 18th century Italy were the main characters of Anne Raya's novel Cry to Heaven. The alteration by Kingsley Amos is an alternative history. Set in 20th century England about a boy soprano and eunuch. Wilbur Smith's series of novels about ancient Egypt, beginning with River God, follow the adventures of a talented eunuch named Tita. George R. R. Martin's fantasy series A Song of Ice and Fire features the eunuch Varus, also called the Spider, a court official bearing the title of Master of Whispers, the equivalent of the real world spymaster. Another character, Theon Greyjoy, is implied to have turned into a eunuch while held prisoner. The unsullied, elite eunuch soldiers, are also greatly featured in the books. The character of the pardoner in the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer is implied to be a eunuch, or even homosexual. <laughs> Notable eunuchs In chronological order. First millennium BC Mutakal Marduk, 8th century BC, Assyrian chief eunuch, eponym of the year 798 BCE in an Assyrian eponym chronicle. Yariri, 8th century BC, regent of Neo-Hittite Carchemish, thought to likely be an eunuch. Aspamistres or Mithridates, 5th century BCE, bodyguard of Xerxes I of Persia, and with Artabanus, his murderer. Artaxers, an envoy of Artaxerxes I and Darius II of Persia. Pagoas, 4th century BC, prime minister of King Artaxerxes III of Persia, and his assassin. Pagoas is an old Persian word meaning eunuch. Pagoas, 4th century BCE, a favorite of Alexander the Great. Influential in changing Alexander's attitude toward Persians and therefore in the king's policy decision to try to integrate the conquered peoples fully into his empire as loyal subjects. He thereby paved the way for the relative success of Alexander's Seleucid successors and greatly enhanced the diffusion of Greek culture to the east. Philetaris, 4th, 3rd century BC, founder of the Atalid dynasty of Pergamum Sima Qian, Old Romanization SSU Ma Qian, 2nd, 1st century BC, the first person to have practiced modern historiography, gathering and analyzing both primary and secondary sources in order to write his monumental history of the Chinese Empire. 
Ganymedes, first century BCE, highly capable advisor and general of Cleopatra VII's sister and rival, Princess Arsinoe. Unsuccessfully attacked Julius Caesar three times at Alexandria. Pothinus, first century BC, regent for Pharaoh Ptolemy XII. Spurus, first century BC, an attractive Roman boy who was castrated by and later married to Emperor Nero, first millennium AD. Unidentified eunuch of the Ethiopian court, first century AD, described in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter eight. Philip the Evangelist, one of the original seven deacons, is directed by the Holy Spirit to catch up to the eunuch's chariot and hears him reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Philip explained that the section prophecies Jesus' crucifixion, which Philip described to the eunuch. The eunuch was baptized shortly thereafter. Kai Lun Old Romanization Say Lun, 1st, 2nd century AD, reasonable evidence exists to suggest that he was truly the inventor of paper. At the very least, he established the importance of paper and standardized its manufacture in the Chinese Empire. Origen, early Christian theologian, allegedly castrated himself based on his reading of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19 verse 12 For there are eunuchs, who were born so from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs, who were made so by men, and there are eunuchs, who have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. He that can take, let him take it. Despite the fact that the early Christian theologian Tertullian wrote that Jesus was a eunuch, there is no corroboration in any other early source. The Scopti did, however, believe it to be true. Eutropius 5th century, only eunuch known to have attained the highly distinguished and very influential position of Roman consul. Chrysaphius, chief minister of Eastern Roman Emperor Theodosius II, architect of imperial policy towards the Huns. Narses 478 573 general of Byzantine Emperor Justinian I, responsible for destroying the Ostrogoths in 552 at the Battle of Taganae in Italy and saving Rome for the empire. Solomon, general and governor of Africa under Justinian I. Staurakios, chief associate and minister of the Byzantine Empress Irene of Athens. Ignatius of Constantinople, 799 to 877, twice Patriarch of Constantinople during troubled political times, 847 to 858 and 867 to 877. First absolutely unquestioned eunuch saint, recognized by both the Orthodox and Roman churches, there are a great many early saints who were probably eunuchs, though few either as influential nor unquestioned as to their castration. Yasmin al Qadim died 891, Emir of Tarsus and successful commander in the wars against Byzantium. Muniz al Qadim 845-846-933-934, commander in chief of the Abbasid armies between 908 and his death. Joseph Bringas, chief minister of the Byzantine Empire under Romanos II 959-963, second millennium AD. Jia Xian, c. 1010 c. 1070, Chinese mathematician, invented the Jia Xian triangle for the calculation of square roots and cube roots. Li Thuong Kiet, 1019-1105, general during the Li dynasty in Vietnam. Penned what is considered the first Vietnamese declaration of independence. Regarded as a Vietnamese national hero. Pierre Abelard, 1079-1142, French scholastic philosopher and theologian. Forcibly castrated by his girlfriend's uncle while in bed. Malik Kafir, Florida, 1296 to 1316, a eunuch slave who became a general in the army of Aladdin Khalji, ruler of the Delhi Sultanate. Zheng He, 1371 to 1433, famous admiral who led huge Chinese fleets of exploration around the Indian Ocean. Judar Pasha, late 16th century, a Spanish eunuch who became the head of the Moroccan invasion force into the Songhai Empire. Kim Chio Son, one of the most famous eunuchs in Korean Joseon dynasty, ably served kings in the Joseon dynasty. His life is now the subject of a historical drama in South Korea. Muhammad Khan Qajar, chief of the Qajar tribe. He became the king, Shah of Persia in 1794 and established the Qajar dynasty. Zhao Gao, favorite of Qin Shi Huangdi, who plotted against Li Si died 210 BC. Zhang Rang, head of the infamous Ten Chongxi, ten attendants of Eastern Han Dynasty. Huang Hao, eunuch in the state of Shu, also appears in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. 
Cen Hun, eunuch in the state of Wu during the Three Kingdoms period Gao Lishi, a loyal and trusted friend of Tang Emperor Xuanzang Le Van Diet, famous 18th century Vietnamese eunuch, military strategist and government official not a true eunuch, he was born a hermaphrodite Senesino (1686–1758), Italian contralto castrato singer. Farinelli (1705–1782), Italian soprano castrato singer. Giusto Fernando Tenducci (c. 1736–1790), Italian soprano castrato singer. Li Fuguo, the Tang eunuch who began another era of eunuch rule Yu Chaoin, Tang eunuch who began his career as army supervisor Wang Zhen, first Ming eunuch with much power, see Tumu Crisis Gang Bing, patron saint of eunuchs in China who castrated himself to demonstrate his loyalty to the Yongle Emperor Yixia, admiral in charge of expeditions down the Amur River under the Yongle and Xuan emperors Lu Jin, a well-known eunuch despot, member of the Eight Tigers Wei Zhongxian, most infamous eunuch in Chinese history Wu Rui, a Chinese eunuch in La Dynasty Annam Vietnam, Li Lianying, a despotic eunuch of the Qing Dynasty Thomas P. Corbett, Boston Corbett 1832 presumed dead 1894, who killed John Wilkes Booth who killed Abraham Lincoln the 16th President of the United States, castrated himself to avoid temptation from prostitutes Alessandro Moreschi 1858-1922, Italian castrato singer, the only one to make recordings. Sun Yaoting (1902–1996), last surviving imperial eunuch of Chinese history. Topic see also Nullo. Topic references. Topic citations. Topic sources. Topic external links. The ancient Roman and Talmudic definition of natural eunuchs, born eunuchs, home page and library. The eunuch archive. Eunuchs in Pharaonic Egypt. The eunuchs of Ming Dynasty China. Hidden power. The palace eunuchs of Imperial China. Thirty-eight rare pictures of eunuchs during Qing Dynasty. The perfect servant. Eunuchs and the social construction of gender in Byzantium long-term consequences of castration in men, lessons from the Skoptsi and the eunuchs of the Chinese and Ottoman courts, the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism December 1, 1999 Vol. 84 No. 12-4324-4331